Hello, everybody, and welcome to Inside Rovers Away Days preview. Of course, Richie Welland's side travelling to Sheffield Wednesday in a South Yorkshire derby this weekend. I'm joined by Rob Jones, former Rovers and Sheffield Wednesday captain and editor of the Doncaster Free Press, Liam Hoden. Liam, I'll start with you and, and what this game means this weekend. Of course, not only a South Yorkshire derby, but a, a reuni- reunited Darren Moore with Doncaster Rovers. Yep, I think that's certainly added some spice to what would have been a, a fairly spicy occasion anyway, the first time that Rovers are coming up against uh, Darren Moore uh, since he left quite unceremoniously in uh, back in March. So I think there'll be, there'll be plenty of ill feeling from the away end. I don't think that's uh, too much of an exaggeration. Rob, these two sides didn't exactly get off to the, the perfect start last weekend. Rovers beaten at, at home to Wimbledon and Wednesday. Uh, what could prove to be a, a decent point on the road at Charlton, but this weekend represents a good opportunity, I think, for both teams to try and get their first win. Yeah, I think both teams will be probably disappointed that they didn't get off to a, a better start at the beginning of the season. <clears throat> it's always nice when you, you start the season off with a win because you don't you don't feel like you're catching up to those that have won uh, previously. So I, I watched the Sheffield Wednesday game on TV uh, and I think what was it very few shots on targets, if any, from both sides. So it was a very cagey affair. Uh, lots of possession either side but nothing really penetrative, penetrative at the t- uh, top end where Doncaster Doncaster went in front but then unfortunately fell behind uh, during the game and, and couldn't claw one back so I think both teams will be looking to to get that first win on the board uh, a positive step forward and uh, if, if it's a team that's come down uh, that's trying its very best to get back into winning ways uh, we talk about the the mentality of teams that that, that that come out fall out of the of the championship and how difficult it is in League One to to try and bounce back quick quickly and, and sometimes at the first attempt. So Sheffield Wednesday will, will be trying to do that. Uh, Doncaster will be trying to get that first win on the board to try and get that momentum uh, because the, t- the season didn't fi- finish last season as well as everybody would have liked. So I think there's a lot, an awful lot of play for from both teams. But I think the biggest thing for them is. Uh, early stage is trying not to concede uh, away from home uh, Sheffield Wednesday would be desperate to score goals at home and make that a fortress uh, but don't ask to the away side so it's in the ascendancy of Sheffield Wednesday to come out and try and force the game really so it could work it could work either way Liam we spoke a little bit off there about the atmosphere at Hillsborough in the first game properly in league terms in front of fans for a long long time and what sort of job can Rovers do in, in quieting them down? It, it, I suppose, like Rob says, it all depends on the start, doesn't it? Yeah, I think if Rovers can frustrate <laughs> and can, you know, contain Wednesday, particularly as, as Rob pointed out, not a lot of sort of penetration in that previous game. It was the same against Huddersfield in the Cup the week before. It's not quite come together up front for Wednesday so far or heading into that final third. If Rovers can keep them quiet for the opening period, maybe even the the first half, that kind of bouncing atmosphere that there will be initially and certainly will be before kickoff, that'll dissipate a little bit. And and that that's a place that, that can turn and can get a bit frustrated quite easily. So Rovers look to go and put a bit of pressure on and and, and keep Wednesday penned in. The hope is, of course, that, that Rovers will have upwards of 2,000 fans there as well up in that top tier. How big a role could they have to play in a, a team that's, Maybe not got off to the flying start that, that many fans would have liked. I think Richie Wellens has spoken about it, how much he wants to uh, to get the, the supporters to get behind the players. You know, I think we saw some of that in midweek, albeit with a much smaller number at Walsall, who really got behind them. And, and it was great to see the scenes at the end after the penalty shootout with the players celebrating in front of the fans and the fans making a, a, a tremendous amount of noise. They'll need that at Hillsborough on Saturday. As you say, it's going to be rocking from a Wednesday point of view. It's been a long 18 months, as we know, at the keep mode. It was great last weekend to get that, that buzz back again. Wednesday will have that too. But Rovers fans can make some noise as well. And I'm sure there'll probably be somebody in the home dugout that they'll be making some noise towards. Rob, in terms of Darren Moore, obviously leaving Rovers at the time that he did. And in terms of club size, nobody could argue that the size of Sheffield Wednesday. But when you look at the move at the time, you could see why many Rovers fans may have been frustrated but now they find themselves coming up against their former manager. Yeah, I think it's always difficult when a manager moves on for whatever reasons, whether it's uh, the team's flying high, which it was at the point, I think it was fourth in the division when he, he moved he moved uh, away into Sheffield Wednesday. But 
I think that there's an awful lot of grumblings in the press and the media about his, his moving on. So it wasn't a real great surprise to anybody that he did move on. Uh, but that being said, it's it's always disappointing from a from a club's point of view when the manager chooses to move to somewhere else. It's very difficult when the man it's different when the manager gets a sack because it's out of his hands. Uh, but he he chose to move on. He chose to move to, to Sheffield Wednesday, who uh, were in a in a perilous perilous condition a situation at, at that point. Uh, and he's he was given what I think eight ten games to try and get them to turn around and and, and stay in the, in the championship, which. It was well. It was, a, it was a very difficult task to, to start with, to be honest, and it, and it eluded that way. But uh, no, I, I think any any supporter when the, man, the manager walks away, there's always that that bit of bit of feeling and and that intensity. And I'm sure there'll be no different. Uh, you can talk about statues of football clubs. I'm a Sheffield Wednesday fan, so I'm a bit I'm a I'm a bit biased that way. And uh, Sheffield Wednesday is my favourite club, my 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 club. So I'm, I'll never say anything bad about them, but. He, he chose to move along with his staff. Uh, he's had a, a big rebuild in the, in the summer. Uh, I think a lot of players had to be taken off the wage bill. Uh, a lot of players moved on. Uh, so it's, a, it's a, a new upward learning curve for, for Darren Moore, as it is Richie. Uh, Richie's come in. He's, he's had to change an awful lot, lot around. And I think it would probably be two teams who probably a bit cagey to start with, don't want to lose the game. Uh, but I think as the season progresses, you'll, you'll probably see the best from, from both of them. Uh, like, like, like Liam said, then the goalkeeper, the, the, the striking situation at Sheffield Wednesday is not great at the moment, but I'm sure it'll get it'll get sorted out. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday can attract really good players to the football club, so I'm, I'm sure there'll be no difficulties difficulties there. Uh, and as we we saw with uh, with Doncaster, yes, they scored the first home home league goal, uh, did really well against Walsall, but. There'll be a threat. There will be a threat. So it's it's one for, for Sheffield Wednesday one to really get the crowd behind them, uh, which I played in that situation. Sheffield Wednesday and, and the intensity and the atmosphere is incredible. Uh, I remember the last time I played at Sheffield Wednesday was for Doncaster when we won we won one nil and Federico Makeda scored. So uh, that was an intense atmosphere. We went out there, set our stall out, defended really well. Uh, Makeda scored later on in second. In, I think it was the second half he scored, uh, and then. And then we, we, we got the result. So it's it's one of them which we can go either way. But I'm sure with the Sheffield Wednesday fans being out of the stadium for such a long time, uh, that will add a, an added factor to, to the game as a whole. Liam, Wednesday may be struggling in attack. Rovers struggling in attack for different reasons. Of course, a, a lack of numbers up there with the injuries to the Taylor, Okanabiri and Hiwula. The back line may be a little bit more settled with a new goalkeeper behind them. How much can that help in these weeks and months while you're still sort of putting the, ter- the team together to have a solid base to, to build from? Certainly, as I think, again, we saw that on, on Tuesday night at Walsall in the Cup that there were, whereas there'd been a bit of nerves among the, the entire team uh, uh, against Wimbledon on Tuesday, a lot more settled, a lot more calm. You've got Tom Anderson, who oh, is that assured head all, all the time. Uh, Will Sean Williams settling in. The fullbacks playing the part as well, and and that did provide a, a really good base, a lot of confidence as well, and 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 then moving that ball into midfield and showing that bit of control of possession, what what Rovers have been crying out for, that can be massive. You've got to put the thing is, if you don't concede, you don't lose, and I think I'm, I'm not saying that's what the mindset will be this weekend, but it will be a big factor into ensuring the game doesn't really run away from from Rovers. So that solid base is is going to be vital. Rob, Wednesday lost Callum Patterson last weekend to a, a head knock. It seems like he won't be available to face Rovers. So that opens the door for another new signing in, in Lee Gregory, Sheffield born, and I'm sure keen to get off to a good start with his new club. Yeah, it's always the same when a, a player comes in and he he, hits, he wants to hit the ground running, especially a striker. Strikers want to score very early on. So that, uh, that concern is, is for, from getting off the, off, off the target is, is dis, dispelled. Uh, but like Liam was saying, then uh, both teams will be wanting to cement themselves as a as a as a charge in the division. And to do that, it's not it's not so much all about the strikers; it's about what you do behind that. So it's about the, the goalkeeper, the back four, the defensive side, of the midfield, and be very difficult to break down. I'm sure I'm Richie will play the Sheffield Wednesday many many times, so he'll be go. I'm sure he'll be going there to to try and quiet the, the crowd over the first half an hour, forty minutes, and then see where they they, they go from there. But uh, leagues, leagues are won and promotions are made by the amount of clean sheets that you have. And like Liam said, 
you don't you don't concede goals, you'll win more games than you lose. Mm. Having said that, with the defensive side of it, how important could the midfield battle be with the likes of Barry Bannon with Sheffield Wednesday? Rovers architects, you would hope to be Ben Close, John Bostock in the absence of, of Matt Smith. Do you feel that that could be where it's won and lost? Uh, well, John Bostock's going to return back to Sheffield Wednesday. So John was there when I was there. Uh, very talented footballer. Uh, really good, really good engine, really good on the ball. Uh, creative, uh, drives, drives with the ball. And then you've got Barry Bannon, who's all action, uh, loves to tackle, loves to carry the ball. Uh, he was probably the bright spark against uh, Charlton, if I'm being brutally honest. Uh, he's the one that seems to drive the team forward. Uh, so it bodes well for a, a, a very, well, not difficult, but an interesting midfield bout between the, the three of them. Uh, but they've all got to come to the party. Uh, one, one player is not going to win the game, uh, especially with, with in, in the derby as a such. So I'm, I'm sure that if all players turn up, it'll be a great spectacle for both sets of supporters. Uh, and with the Sheffield Wednesday head on, I'd like <laughs> uh, I would, I'd like to get Sheffield Wednesday off and more, with a bit of momentum. But I have also a massive affinity with Doncaster Rovers, so uh, a little bit torn on that on that side of it. But no, that's well. I think everybody wants a great spectacle to start with. They want a good football match, with lots of passion, uh, lots of drive. But the sets of players want to give everything out there on, to win the game. Uh, and then and then see where they go from there. Liam, of course, Rob was in action in midweek. Wednesday didn't have a fixture, having played their Carabao Cup first round tie a couple of weeks prior. Does that break in play help Wednesday? But also, Rovers having another game under their belt could benefit them as well. It's a mixed bag, and because we're talking to Richie Wellens after the game on on Tuesday, asking him about getting through in the cup and having another game in only a fortnight's time with a small squad that's still catching up. There's the there's the bonus of getting more minutes into players' legs that haven't quite had sort of the full allocation that they've had, that they would like to have had in pre-season. But also you run that risk of injury. So it's a difficult one. I'm sure there'll be a few sort of sore bodies after after Tuesday night, whereas Wednesday have had this full week to prepare. And we know from Darren Moore's time uh, at Rovers how much he, he values that time on the training ground and working on various things, something I think Richie Wellens shares with him as well. So it could be a, a, bit, a bit of a mixed one. I think Rovers... As, as we saw, there, were, there was a step up from what they produced at the weekend. So hopefully, and there will need to be as well, but hopefully we'll see another significant step forward having played that one in midweek as well. Who do you see as the, the biggest threats for Rovers? Who should Wednesday be worried about? For anyone listening to this from a Wednesday point of view, Rovers, of course, as we said, lacking numbers and perhaps lacking their first choice front three. But who do you see being key to Rovers potentially winning this game? It's hard to look past Tommy Rowe. In any any time anybody asks you about Rovers, Tommy Rowe at the minute is just the standout. F- fingers crossed he's available after sitting out uh, uh, the, uh, the the game on Tuesday. But the, the how much he gets about the pitch, you know, often we saw in pre-season that coming from left back, but being the most advanced player up the pitch, we saw it also the other night, how many crosses came from the other flank and found that far post where Tommy Rowe would have been. I think Tommy will get in. I wouldn't be surprised at all if Tommy got into double figures this season in terms of goals. I think he'll be a big threat. There's the added intrigue this weekend as well that he's going up against his former Bristol City teammate, uh, Jack Hunt, uh, on that uh, same flank. So that'll be an, an interesting one as well. But I think Tommy Rowe is huge. And that building that relationship with Ben Close, that looked so bright at points in, in pre season. And, and hopefully we'll see a bit more of that again this weekend. Rob, will you be watching on from afar at the weekend, casting a keen eye on things? Yeah, I'm coaching first. Uh, so I'm coaching till about quarter past half past three. So uh, I'll be checking the scores and what's going on uh, from both sides. <laughs> uh, I still am red and white. I said I'm blue and white, unfortunately, for, for you, Doncaster Rose fans. So uh, I've just uh, edged that way a little bit. But no, for me, I'd like both teams to do really well this year. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday obviously come down uh, and uh, they've got to change a lot for a lot to go back to where, where they were before. Doncaster Rovers, new regime, new group of players uh, wanting to drive on. Uh, the, the fans deserving uh, championship football has a, has had in previous years. So uh, it's, it's two teams that will probably, I, I think as, after the game, if, if you come, Richie comes away with the point, they'll be, they'll be happy with that. Won't be delighted, but we'll be happy. I think Darren Moore comes away with the point. I think he'd be disappointed a little bit because of home home uh, advantage. But 
it's about small steps in in this division, and, and as we saw the the, the year that we won the, won the division, it's small steps. Just keep picking those points, keep accumulating those points, and then get yourself a bit of momentum. Uh, get yourself a settled squad, settled group of players. Know exactly what they're doing, uh, how they how they're playing, uh, and that's the the foundations at this point. Uh, I said earlier that we all want to get off to a good start, but it's not how you it's not really how you start. It's how you you, you gain that momentum, and then that how how you then produce game after game after game to, to win game win, win those points and, and keep accumulating, accumulating. Liam, just finally then, while a point would probably be a, a good result for Rovers and something to build from, what would three points at Hillsborough do for the team on Saturday? It'd be absolutely massive. Again, Richie were talking about it the other day. His focus at the minute is is building those relationships and trying to, to get the team playing how he wants them to play, having had that disruptive pre-season when he's not been able to get as much work into him. But he also acknowledged how important picking up results will be for confidence. Again, he said that after what that penalty shootout win did on, on Tuesday and, and you saw the buzz among the players after the game for that one. That could be huge. The, the, there's so much work. It's quite fragile at the minute with, with the size of the squad and the number of players that are out injured and, and missing. But confidence to keep them driving forward. Again, touching back to that, that season that Rob talked about when, when Rovers got promoted from this division, the confidence just rolled on and on. The ne- it, 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 it went into every game, and I'm sure Rob said this many times himself, thinking that we're going to win every week. That's what wins can do for you, just build that bit of momentum. And especially with how fragile things are at now, at this present time for Rovers, a win would be huge.